Hey everyone. Well, another video here on Polar Redneck World. And we're doing a little bit more work on our Project uh, 2001 Oldsmobile Silhouette minivan with the 3400 V6 engine. So if you followed uh, the past video on this van, you know that when I got it, it was a no-start situation. And uh, so the owner said that it was prog pro progressively getting worse. And uh, finally it died in Fayetteville, Arkansas. We went out and towed it. Well, I'm going to try to make a long story short here, because I've actually got a demolition derby to go attend tonight. But, um, <clears throat> got it home, tried to get it to start, battery was deal away, had to take the battery out, charge it, and that's actually my battery. Um, so put that in there, and it tried to crank over, but it would kick back. Well, come to find out that the wires for the two and the four spark, plug, spark plugs were crossed, that's why it was kicking back. Fixed that, got it to start, kind of, you'd have to hold it to the floor, and it would just sit there and go, duh, 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 duh. wouldn't rev, wouldn't idle right, wouldn't even bring the idle on the engine up enough to bring the, to shut the um, <clears throat> oil pressure light out. So, all that being said, I started checking one thing or another. I didn't think it was an ignition problem because I'm getting spark at the spark plugs. You can see I've got the spark plugs out here on this head, and I haven't done anything on the other head because of the inaccessibility to it. You literally have to rotate the whole engine which I think I've already mentioned on the last video. Excuse me for a second while I take a buff on my cigar here. Which is actually what we're going to be using to test this uh, engine out. I, uh, <clears throat> As you can see, I have a hose hooked up to the number 4 cylinder. And that's because after doing a compression test on this side of the engine, I had profoundly low compression. I had like 60 PSI on number two, nothing on number four, and like 70 or 75 on number six. Not good. And not good at all being the center cylinder here is dead. So I decided to find out where the compression was going with regards to the center cylinder. And so I broke up my uh, cylinder leakage tester, which I've used on a previous video. I think it was on a Escort ZX2. So, I broke that out. Well, that requires, in order for you to get the, uh, in order for you to get the uh, piston on the cylinder, you're going to be checking to top dead center the compression stroke. You've got to be able to feel some compression out of the uh, hose or pull the valve cover off in order to watch the valve train yourself. And I don't really have time to pull the valve cover off. And I couldn't feel any compression through the tube as I was cranking it over by hand. So basically, I determined the compression stroke, there's only one of two positions. It's either compression or exhaust stroke when it's in top dead center. One of those two positions. Only one of the two. So I tried it on one, and I couldn't figure out where the compression loss was going. So then I took the rod out. I was using a brass rod to stick down in the spark plug hole. And... Um, done it a second time, I rotated it around, and started hearing compression, feeling compression actually as I was feeling around. So I decided to illustrate, if I can, if I can juggle things around here enough, how to determine where your compression loss is going. If you don't happen to have a cylinder leakage tester, you can always run down to the Mini Mart <clears throat> and wherever and get a couple of these. These are strawberry flavored Swisher Sweets. So, I've got my hose hooked up. You cannot use a hose off of a compression tester because it won't let you go, it won't let you blow through the hose into the cylinder. It's got like a valve. So, I don't know if we can juggle this, but I'm going to take a couple of big puffs on this cigar and I'm going to blow into the hose and I'm going to show you where my compression loss is going. Or at least I'm going to try. That's your plan. So, let's get that ready there. Okay. Take a puff and then we'll set it on the fuse block. And hopefully we can see. I don't know if there's enough light, but we'll try. All right, here we go. I don't know if that's showing up on the camera. I really don't. This is such a a tight space. Well, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, 
probably not because I don't have the best camera around but <clears throat> basically where the leakage is going it's going right down cylinder number four and then backtracking up through cylinder number two in fact you can still kind of see a little smoke lingering around right there and just kind of I don't know if the camera's gonna get this well anyway that's that's where our leakage is happening it looks as though we've got a uh, crossover leakage on this head again we've got see what was the PSI rating on wrote it down what the PSI was <clears throat> Number two was 60, number four was nothing, and number six was around 70. And in my opinion, as a shade tree mechanic, nothing below 100, 120 is healthy for an engine. So, yeah, it looks like we've got um, smoke going in that cylinder and coming out the other. I'm going to try one more time with one good strong puff, see if I can get it to show up on this cheap whatever brand camera this is hand me down <laughs> okay here we go well I don't know if that got it or not but I'm running out of cigar anyway and running out of time to be honest <clears throat> So, anyway, there we are. Um, that's what we've determined was our issue. Was uh, cylinder tra or compression transfer between cylinder two and cylinder four, or rather, well, I suppose that's right, between cylinder four and cylinder two, and then on cylinder two's compression between two and four, most likely. So, anyway. Um, <clears throat> I would pull the engine apart and do just this head, but I have no reason to believe that the other cylinder head is any better. And the only way I can really check that, and I don't know if they're going to want me to, is to rotate the engine to gain access to the back cylinders and then run my compression test thusly to make our determination. So, in all likelihood, this is not going to go, this project is not going to go any farther, in all likelihood. Um, I think the owner wants a truck. So, I guess he's probably going to try to sell this silhouette for whatever he can get out of it. It's got 140, oh, I forget what kind of mileage it had. 144,000 or something like that. So it's not super, super, super high, but they never maintained it. Uh, at least that's what I was told. So, anyway, there we go. Thanks for watching. Comments always welcome. And I'll make the next update video, either if I decide to check the back cylinders, which is going to be more of a job, or I guess I'll just pull the battery that's mine out and see where the owner wants to go from here. Peace out. Comments welcome.